Manchester's Metrolink tram system is sleek and modern and the largest of its type in Britain, but it has one major flaw. There are whole swathes of Greater Manchester which it still doesn't reach. And considering most of these areas had great tram connections back in the 1930s, are we still desperately short of a proper tram network? How can we be worse off today than we were in the 1930s? And in the age of trying to tackle climate change, is it not all a little bit embarrassing? So join me on a journey around Greater Manchester, filming things that don't exist, and looking out of tram windows thoughtfully and for dramatic effect. For example, why can you get a tram to somewhere called Bessies of the Barn, but not Stockport? Why are there eight tram stops serving the area around Salford Quays, but none serving Salford City Centre? And if you ignore the simple stylized Metrolink map and shift to a map of where these places actually are, a number of glaring holes appear to exist in the network. The large urban centres of Salford, Bolton, Stockport and Wigan are all forgotten about. And what about this massive hole to the north, in the middle of Oldham Town and Bury Town, known as Middle Town? And what about the area just south of the city centre, such as Moss Side and Levenshume? How can Rochdale, 15 kilometres away, be connected to the system, but not Ardwick, less than a kilometre? Another big problem with the system is also obvious from the map. All of the existing lines run into or out of Manchester city centre. Now that's great for commuters living in the satellite towns who want to work in the city, but not much else. If, for example, you wanted to travel from Oldham to Bury, just 13 kilometres away, you'd have to catch a tram to the city centre, change at Victoria, and then get the Bury tram back out again. It's a journey of 25 and a bit kilometres, almost double the length, and would take you around an hour and 10 minutes. That's almost as long as catching a bus, which are dirty and add to road congestion which is the main problem that trams are trying to solve. It's the same issue if Oldhamers wanted to visit Ashton. They'd have to go all the way through the city centre, which is slow. In total, they'd have to go through a whopping 25 other tram stops just to go between one town and the next. The distance between Ashton and Oldham is barely six kilometres, meaning it'd be quicker to walk. It's no wonder then that we rely so heavily on the bus network. But for two large neighbouring towns in one of the world's wealthiest countries, is it really that good to be linked by just a single form of public transport? And finally, what if Oldham has just wanted to stay in Oldham? Doesn't the current spider-like philosophy of the Metrolink also encourage shoppers to go to the city centre too, skipping over their local town centres? If everybody is half an hour from the city centre, why bother shopping in the towns where options are more limited? Now, of course, trams can't be sent everywhere. They're not buses. It'd be impractical to send them on every major road in every corner of the region. But the current system is still a limited method of public transport in the area, serving a limited number of communities in a limited way. Maybe with a little bit of imagination, we can fulfill its true potential. There are a few possible extensions that would hoover up some smaller communities and still be relatively easy to go ahead with. How about extending the East Didsbury line to Stockport? Or a line along the old Fallowfield Loop, everyone's favourite old railway line and now a national cycle route. But I want to look at a more radical idea that has been going around, literally. This is the orbital route linking the satellite towns by tram without even going near the city. It would mean traveling from one town to the next would be quick and efficient, and that trams in the city center would face less overcrowding. And as mentally ambitious as this looks, is it even possible? After all, we're talking a hell of a lot of track. Is it possible to go from one town to the next without crashing through a load of living rooms? Well, luckily there might be a built-in solution. Remember, a lot of the current tram system uses former railway lines. And if we look at a map of former railway lines in the area, we see some handy possibilities. Our reporter, Ollie, is out and about in the field looking at some of those places. Ollie? <coughs> Ooh, we are. Hello? 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 How about the feasibility of that line through to Stockport? 
Yeah, it looks fine. Good work, Ali. The East Didsbury line could be easily expanded southwards into Stockport using the old Sheffield and Midland railway line, which is still kind of empty, and then somehow smush its way into the town centre. Here it would face two major obstacles, the motorway and the River Mersey. But a bit of clever bridge building could easily take it over both and quickly down onto street level again. It could then utilise the underused Ghost Line train route through Reddish and Denton, then into Ashton West and meet the existing line there. Easy peasy. With a bit of fancy footwork, it could access the former Guide Bridge railway line, currently used by dog walkers and cyclists and then join the existing line again into Oldham Town Centre. Another former railway line already exists between Rochdale and Bolton, only really encountering problems here at Bradley Fold, where a chunk of new houses have been built across the old line. Bolton Town Centre would have to face the same kind of reorganisation as other town centres, with the line running on streets and possibly limiting accessibility for cars. There are more houses in the way to the south, but a diversion west around the back of the hospital might be a better option anyway, helping hospital accessibility. With hardly any effort at all, the old Manchester and Wigan railway line would carry trams into Walkden, and then it gets lucky. The bits travelling into Echoes looks messy and expensive, but up here running through Pendleton, the current railway line has enough room to squeeze two other tracks beside it, most of the way. There's even an old line south of Pomona and an infilled abandoned tunnel which could join the orbital line with the main line again towards East Didsbury, avoiding the city centre and completing our circle beautifully. While this isn't the only possibility, it is the most likely and the least expensive. Utilising former railway lines keeps roads free from clutter and stops you having to knock down houses. But it would still be expensive and probably take decades to build even if it could get funding. It'd also mean the loss of some cycle and walking routes, places to walk your dog, which would no doubt annoy quite a few people. And you might have noticed it does nothing for the aforementioned Middleton or Salford City Centre. And what about Wigan? Lost out beyond the orbit, neglected and forgotten. And yes, not everybody wants trams running down the back of their houses either. I'm not entirely convinced myself, but the orbital route has a lot going for it, and losing a few places to cycle or walk your dog isn't great, but it may be a small price to pay to modernise Greater Manchester's transport and bring down carbon emissions. And let's not forget, these were all railway lines until very, very recently. And if things like motorways and bypasses can get the go-ahead without too much grumbling, then a clean electric tram system should probably too. And you know, if we'd start to tackle greenhouse gas emissions decades ago when we realised it was a serious thing, then today we might have the luxury of picking and choosing what green corridors we can save. So please do let me know what you think of this orbital tram idea. Maybe you think the current system is fine as it is. Maybe a couple of extensions here or there. Or maybe you think Bolton is doing fine without them. Wigan has got enough trains going there. Or maybe you live somewhere like Stockport, which is kind of crying out for them. Maybe the whole thing is a waste of time, trams are rubbish, maybe not. Or maybe trams will be irrelevant once again. We've not even talked about other methods of public transport which may pop up over the next 20 or 30 years, things that haven't even been invented yet. Maybe by 2050, trams will be seen as quaint and old fashioned once more. And there'll be some guy on YouTube doing a video about how nostalgic he is for them. <laughs> Loser. Mm -hmm.